Hello, Dan here from Sherp ET. Thought I'd just share uh, my last experience in the Sherp. Uh, this is just a family pond. Uh, only bullheads are in here, but you can tell this pond actually went down almost like five feet since the winter. That's not for me driving up and down in that. That water was a hell of a lot higher than what it is right now in the picture. Uh, I cannot remember in my lifetime that it was ever as high as it was this past winter, so it changed things fairly dramatically. And as a result of that, this bank is so much steeper than it has ever been. This is one of my favorite things about the Sherp is going down, just leaving that clutch out, taking your foot off the accelerator, and just letting the torque of the engine guide you right into the water. It is nice and smooth. It's something that I really enjoy. That water right there, right off that bank, is about four feet deep. Uh, so there's no way that you can touch the bottom. Uh, I was actually just wasting some time here. The neighbors stopped me a little while ago and asked if they could have a ride. Uh, and I said, sure. Um, so they went back, did some things, and I had to get a couple of things accomplished. And they are going to be showing up, showing up very, very shortly. Um, particular video here is one that uh, is fairly popular on TikTok. Uh, I could have kept going and I'm sure that I could have made it up that hill, but I chose to stop because I just didn't want to rip it all up. And I wish you could see what the front of that hill looks like, but the face of that is virtually straight for about two feet and then it starts to be a little bit more of a doable angle. But I just thought I'd give another shot and uh, run around and back and hit it again. Just like I talked about in my ice videos, my brush videos and so forth, the key when you're going up an incline is to try to be as perpendicular to that obstacle you can. It just makes things go a hell of a lot easier. Um, this time I was a little bit foolish also. Uh, I was in second gear and when you're in second gear and you're going up a fairly drastic incline, which this really is, it takes a lot of power, um, and I didn't want to try to even attempt to kill the engine, so I just came back down, put it in first gear, put the pedal to the metal, and nothing really stops the shirt when it's in first gear. Uh, the torque is absolutely perfect for going through pretty much anything. You notice those rocks there in the back? Those rocks were yeah, some of the right. so rocks that I've shown in videos that I was climbing over in the water the and were barely the showing no, the over the top of it. Okay. So, so I'll be quiet here. Yep, kind of here. So you just, yep, just grab right there. Did you see how Charlie did that, Grace? <laughs> so I brought Gracie out last year to go. So just one second now up. So if something would happen, which I don't think it would, but you see this little cord right here that's right here? So what happens if you pull on that? So pull on it. So if you pull on it and it's push, and then, you just, and then you just let it go. So let it go. So you just know how to do it. That's it. And if you have to, for whatever reason, we have to shut it. So make sure you grab these chains and keep them on the inside because otherwise it hits that gasket. And then this right here. All you have to do to just open it is just push on it. Just push. Hard. Hard. Come on. It's like you're do hitting it. a home run. No, no, you gotta, you gotta do it. So if something happens, then you know what, there you go. That's it. Like hitting a home run in softball. So this has got to be open before this can be open. And just to let you know, we're only in three feet of water. So you can see There's life preservers there, too. Oh. So... I would suggest they'll use it on this side because then you can hold on to that strap. Or one of you switch sides. No, no, you stay here. One's got to stay so one. Right, you got a strap right behind you, right there. And then this one. Grab this one. But that one right there, if you just grab that, that'll be. Yeah, it would be. Well, good. nobody would know how to put the clutch in. Oh, that way. <laughs> okay, so hold on. So we're going to be tilted way down. You ready? <laughs> Now we're in the water.
again, so Actually dry. Uh, I have to go home and get Uncle Pat's tractor. No, I don't know. Oh, I could do that probably. Wait a minute, what? Got, you probably got enough okay, chain though. Yeah. I've got to see what's back there first and see what's broke. So I, I gotta get everybody out. Unfortunately. Oh, we can go I'm on. sorry. Uh, <laughs> I can't move right now. Wait, it's okay. This isn't like a joke, like like when you were going like up and down and like back and forth through the same path, right? No. Well, the old tractor wasn't going to work, so I actually called up the Sherp dealer, and he actually had somebody there the next day. So we got this sucker pulled out. We actually tried to had the mechanical fuse taken out, and that's when we discovered at this particular point that the mechanical fuse was where it broke, was stuck inside of the transmission. Bummer! That means that the transmission is going to be reduced. Hopefully something I will never have happen again. Get pulled on from the Sherp. Fortunately, I uh, busted off a big mechanical link, and part of that mechanical link is actually in the transmission, which I think that actually happened quite a long time ago, but we'll see.
This is a mechanical fuse that is in good condition. This is the mechanical fuse that we took out. Notice the threads are twisted versus this one, nice and straight. And it broke off and unfortunately it's stuck in the side of the transmission. Yeah, the old chirp is out of commission right now. Like we just talked about, I thought I would just quickly share um, what it looks like on the inside. I have basically everything all taken out, all ready to, for the work to begin. I'm guessing that that whole panel right there is gonna be taken off also. I haven't taken that off yet. Um, in addition, it would be that whole frame on top. So working our way around the outside. So again, I got everything taken off on the inside here. Let's actually see if I still have, I do, I still have the switch turned on. Turned on the light, that helps out a little bit in here. So what happens is, there is that mechanical fuse that I showed you that comes off of here and it goes into the transmission. That right there is what broke. And by that breaking, part of that mechanical fuse is stuck up in that transmission and we could not get it out. Therefore, the entire transmission is going to be replaced. Um, main tray eye chain is off right now, along with the disc brake. And again, how this all functions is it goes over, it drives this main shaft. There's a clutch here for the driver's side, which then gets transferred to the front and it gets transferred to the back wheel. And then the same thing on the opposite side. And what happens is, is when you pull the lever back in the front halfway, you're clutching this. When you pull it back farther, you activate this brake. Uh, pretty simple thing again what we're talking through. There's the Kubota uh, engine that we have there. There's the transmission. Moving up here is the Wabasco heater. Again in the winter and summer you change the fan. Right now I do have that summer fan in because it is summer. Um, that's about it. Again there's that front panel that will be taken off. Um, to be able to access that transmission. This entire frame right here also will be taken off along with the small amount of hydraulics and all this. It's going to be, it is some effort.